Hey there, you twisted horror fans. I've got another freaky one for you guys today. It's the super scary story of Lights Out, released in 2016. All right, let's get into it. You might want to keep the lights on for this one. No, for real, I'm being serious here. The movie begins with a shot of a lamp that looks like a fingerprint. We're in a store and we see a guy named Paul, who's talking about his son, Martin. It looks like his mom, Sophie, is sick, and so she keeps talking to herself. Well, that's never a good thing in movies like this, right? Also, there are some really weird mannequins here too. I almost thought one of these things was gonna turn into a monster. Anyway, Paul's assistant, Esther, closes up the store, but the lights go off. Hmm, looks like this movie's staying true to its title. Esther activates the motion lights and hey, what the hell was that? Okay, <laughs> that's definitely bad news. God damn it, Esther, stop playing with the lights. Holy shit, jump scare! Etzler tries to warn Paul about that weird demon thing in the building, but he doesn't pay any attention and tells her to leave so that he can tend to his phone call. Yeah, this guy ain't gonna make it. He's on his way out and comes across that same mysterious figure from earlier. The tension builds up, and so does the creepy factor of this movie. Or whatever the hell this creature thing is supposed to be anyway. Paul injures himself and tries to figure out a way to come out of this alive. He realizes that this thing is afraid of the lights, so he tries to make his escape by locking himself in a room after switching the lights on. He arms himself with a baseball bat to take on this demon. Yeah, right, like that's gonna work. Unfortunately for him, the lights go out and well, he gets killed off screen. But the dead body afterwards is freaking scary to look at. Now that the awesome intro is done, we're introduced to a couple. Well, there's something like a couple, I guess. It's Sophie's daughter, Rebecca, and her, I guess, boyfriend, Brett. Yeah, they're not the best, but in today's world, who really is? Anyway, we're taken to Martin's room, and we learn that he's looking for his mommy. He finds her, but she's talking to somebody in the darkness. All right, that's weird and a little creepy. Shit, man, it's that same shadow monster thing that killed Paul. Martin makes a run for it and locks himself in his room. The lights go out and things don't look too good for him, but he makes it out alive. He ends up at a child services facility the next day after falling asleep during class. He's being taken care of by a person named Emma, and she can't get through to his mom. She calls up Rebecca instead and tells her about what happened when she shows up with Brett. So it looks like Rebecca and Sophie both have some unresolved issues after their biological father left them both. The siblings meet and it's nice to see some sort of affection between the two of them. Martin wants to stay at his sister's place, but she's a little skeptical about it. However, she comes around to the idea after her brother reveals that Sophie's been talking to someone named Diana. Wait a second, that monster has a name? Rebecca then gets really worried after hearing this, so she talks to her mom about Martin and his lack of sleep. They talk it out and really get into a heated argument over their troubled family history while Martin packs his bags because he clearly doesn't want to be here. Hey, wait, what? Shit, it's that thing again! Rebecca wants to take Martin home, but Sophie doesn't like that kind of talk. The women argue about it some more, but Martin clears it up when he says that he wants to get the hell out of there. That makes mommy sad, and I gotta say, I really do feel bad for Sophie here. Martin settles in at Rebecca's place, but then Brett gets into a completely out of place argument with her, and she tells him to get out. The brother and sister bond over a little midnight snack, and Martin worries that the whole family is crazy. Rebecca calms him down, and they go to sleep. The lights go out, and Rebecca wakes up to some scratching. Hmm, Martin really shouldn't be damaging his nails like that. Wait a second, that's not Martin. Well, shit, that thing's back again too. Ha, <laughs> come on man, take it easy with all these jump scares. Maybe I should start referring to the monster as Diana. Luckily, Rebecca manages to switch the lights on before she gets attacked, and she checks up on Martin in the tub. Hmm, that's a weird hiding spot, but they're safe now. Emma visits Rebecca the next day and drops some major legal bombs on her that basically mean that she can't keep Martin with her. Emma takes the kid back to his mom, and that's really the last time we see this character. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. Rebecca finds the scratch marks from the night before, and just as she feared, they read Diana. We get a flashback to when she was a kid, and it turns out that Diana's been a thing for quite a while, and she doesn't like anyone getting in between her and Sophie. Rebecca and Brett make up with a kiss and break into Sophie's house the next day. Yeah, I totally see myself in that guy. They look around and Rebecca comes across a picture of Diana. It looks like she wasn't a fan of the light, even when she was a human. 
Rebecca now comes across a ton of research files and tapes that were being studied by Paul. We find out that Diana and Sophie were friends back when they were patients in a mental institution. The monster girl had a skin condition where she'd get burnt whenever she was exposed to light. She also became obsessed with Sophie and not in the typical serial killer kind of way. Her behavior started to get way out of hand, even Joe and Love look like a decent couple compared to this. Of course, it had to end when the science guys do some experimentation on her and that straight up kills the poor woman. And speaking of the devil, there she is again. Diana attacks Rebecca, but Brett saves her when the door opens and allows in some light. Sophie comes back in and they make their escape with all of Paul's research files. Mommy wants to be nice to her son, so she plans a movie night with Martin. They bond a little and everything looks to be fine until Sophie messes it up by switching off the lights and telling Martin a story about Diana. She claims that her friend never died and she's going to be living there. Diana appears and attacks Martin and he tries to switch on some lamps, but Sophie's taken out all the light bulbs. Bro, what the hell is wrong with this woman? Diana got no chill and she even attacks Sophie when she asks her to not go after her son. Luckily, Martin hits one of the main switches and gets the hell out of the way of his psycho mom. He goes to Rebecca again and she believes everything he says. She then goes on to tell him about what she's just learned and it turns out that Diana's dad killed himself because she couldn't get inside his head. So she's always been a witch of sorts, I guess. The kids try to figure out how to deal with Diana and there's some loud knocking. They think it's Brett with some groceries, but this is a horror movie so you know that that's just not the case. They don't find anyone outside and that's the weird scratching noise again. Diana is back and she does not sound happy. Rebecca switches on the lights and it works at first, but then the crazy monster snatches Martin from under the bed. Great, that's all my childhood fears coming true right there one after the other. Luckily, Rebecca saves him and now she decides it's high time that they got rid of her. They meet Sophie and talk about confronting Diana, but all they get in return is more crazy talk from their mother. Rebecca offers to take Martin home, but he wants to be there for his mom. So they make some lighter arrangements and decide to stay the night. Rebecca and Brett are going to take the couch, but Martin wants his sister to sleep with him. So Brett's going to have to cuddle with the pillows tonight. Well, I guess at least their relationship moves forward on a positive note. Rebecca informs Sophie that she's staying over, and that puts a smile on her face. They hug and you can already sense that Diane is there. Sophie sneaks in a little chit to her daughter, asking her for help. So now we know that she's also a victim and not an enabler. Well, kind of. Okay, so she goes to sleep, but then there's a power outage, of course. Rebecca searches for Brett, but she can't find him. He's just chilling outside for now, so I guess he's fine. Rebecca tries to sort things out and sort the lights out, but Martin wakes up and starts to freak out when he finds himself alone. He takes his candle and looks for his sister, but ah shit, it's Diana again. Martin manages to get away after a struggle and finds Rebecca. Diana locks them inside and they scream for help. Brett comes looking for them, but he gets attacked by a shadow creep. He actually manages to avoid getting killed by using a couple of impressive tricks, like using his phone or his car lights, but then he just drives away. Well, I'm not sure how to feel about that one. Anyway, Sophie tries to tell Diana to not go after her kids, but that doesn't work out too well for her and she gets smacked across the room. Meanwhile, Rebecca and Martin make a fire to create some form of safety and find one of those cool neon signs. Rebecca looks for a way out and comes across some weird writings on the wall and an even weirder thing with some mannequins. Bruh, this is one creepy movie. Hey, wait, that doesn't look like... Oh, shit, jump scare. The monster design on Diana is pretty neat too, but man, that was scary. The neon lights don't seem to work, but Martin manages to come to the rescue with a regular torch. The kids try to wake up their mom, and hey look, Brett's a good guy after all. He brought the cops with him. But they're obviously not going to believe the ghost stuff, so it's kind of expected that they get killed. Well, at least they wake up Sophie and free the kids before Diana gives them some pretty nasty deaths. Brett takes Martin away while Rebecca tries to look for Sophie. That obviously doesn't go too well, as Diana tells them that she was the one who killed Paul. She beat the shit out of Rebecca, and then Sophie comes face to face with her tormentor before she can land her finishing moves. The gun was never going to work on Diana, so there's only one other alternative. She shoots herself, and this causes the monster to die along with her, because apparently there's no Diana without Sophie. Rebecca cries over her mom's dead body, but hey, at least you don't have to deal with the shadow monster coming after you anymore, right? The movie ends with Brett, Rebecca, and their new pseudo-kid chilling in the police van. Man, 
They better have a good story to explain the dead mum and cops, right? Well, there you go guys, that's Lights Out. It was a pretty straightforward movie and had some pretty decent scares. I'd definitely recommend it a watch. But if you'd like more movie recaps just like this, like, share and subscribe to the channel. And you can also hit me up on my Patreon for more exclusive requests or leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Ciao for now.